Thanks for checking out this video. If you've already watched our companion video, Diagnosing a Problem Opening 101, then you have a few tips on what mechanical problems might cause a door not to work properly. This video addresses how to diagnose electromechanical problems. But it's important to note, even when an opening is using electrified hardware, the root cause of a problem is just as likely to be something mechanical. So don't skip our other video unless you are already experienced in doors and door hardware. Let's start with the same premise on our other video. Someone has reported, the door isn't working. Except at this point, you have already ruled out mechanical causes as the likely culprit. Now where do you begin? We suggest you diagnose the situation by first defining it in one of four ways. The system's doing nothing at all. The system's working the opposite as expected. The system's working some of the time. The system's working sort of. Let's walk through each of these four conditions to talk through some possible causes. The system's doing nothing at all. Find out if it worked for a while, but now it is not working at all. If it has previously worked, ask if the system is stone cold dead, or is it still making any sort of noise or movement when activated. You are looking to clarify what a customer means when they say the system isn't working. Is it really completely dead? There may have been a catastrophic failure of one or more components. If you suspect this, ask if there have been any recent storms or electrical problems in the area. Power surges can blow a fuse or otherwise damage a system and cause it to stop functioning. You may need to check if there is power coming out of the power supply. Next, ask if something was recently added to the system. New component parts, like the addition of a lock to an existing circuit, can take the amperage requirement of the system beyond the amperage provided by the power source. Changes in controls, such as going to a new keypad or adding a button at the reception desk, can also create problems. And, even if the power source isn't overtaxed, the additional amperage may be more than the existing wiring can handle. Even if nothing was added to the electrified hardware circuit, ask if there were any other systems recently wired within the building. Wiring work anywhere within the building might well create problems with an existing electronic security system. Even if the wiring is completely separate, the separate wires may have been run near the wires for the security system. A cut or disconnection in the wrong wire can easily cause the security system to fail. Scenarios you may run across include high voltage and low voltage wiring too close together, low voltage wiring near fluorescent fixtures or fluorescent lighting fed on the same circuit as automatic operators. If the product has LEDs for feedback, what are they doing? Many products today have been designed to provide feedback through flashing LEDs. A detailed description of exactly what the LEDs are communicating provides valuable information. The product manual, downloadable from almost all manufacturers' websites, usually gives you, or the technical support specialist you call to help you, the information needed to decode the LEDs. Let's say the system's doing nothing at all, and you learn it has never worked. Begin by asking what components are present in the system. Look at the four basic components, power source, load, switch, and wiring. Determine if the power source provides adequate voltage to the system. Determine if the wiring gauge is adequate to conduct current to the system. Manufacturers provide wiring gauge requirements, and they do so for a reason. Also, you may need to check to see how the control switches are configured. Incorrect control switching may cause a system to do nothing. Ask if the system is connected to a fire alarm. Fire alarms are often hooked into the power for a security system, so they can cut power to the system in the event of a fire. A fire alarm system that isn't active acts as if the fire alarm is tripped. In other words, an inactive fire alarm system will prevent power from flowing through the system. You may need to speak to the company responsible for maintaining the fire alarm system. If the system has never worked, ask if it smoked or sparked when hooked up for the first time. Catastrophic failure can be a little dramatic with smoke or sparks coming out of the power supply. If your customer was present when such a failure occurred, she may be able to give a detailed description of the event. This could tell you which component failed and how. Communicate that information to the component's technical support group to find out if they have had similar reports 
and to determine how to get a replacement component. By the way, mismatch components such as 12 volt products hooked into 24 volt power sources or vice versa can cause catastrophic failure. Another clue for non-working systems is the smell or scorch marks. Even if the customer didn't witness the catastrophic failure, there may be evidence of which component failed. One type of evidence is the smell left behind when electronic component parts melt or burn, which can often be detected long after the actual failure. Another piece of evidence is the presence of scorch marks. Knowing where the scorch marks are located can pinpoint the location of the failure or the improper connections. Let's move on to scenario number two. The system is working the opposite as expected. This usually means the opening is locked when it should be unlocked and unlocked when it should be locked. First, determine if the hardware involved is designed to be configured as either fail-safe or fail-secure. Many products can be ordered as either fail-safe or fail-secure, depending on the customer's requirements. Sometimes, too, the products can either be fail-safe or fail-secure, depending on the way the system was wired or the mechanical configuration of the product made during installation. Another potential reason the hardware is working in an opposite manner is how the switches are configured. The default position on a switch is either normally open, stopping the flow of current, or normally closed, allowing the flow of current. Whatever access control device the customer is using to control the electrified hardware must have the contact configuration required for proper operation of the hardware in use. If the wrong type of switch is used, then the system will operate backwards from expected. Another possible cause to investigate is when there is more than one access control point. Systems with more than one access control point have more than one switch. These multiple switches are wired either in series or in parallel. The switch condition determines the operation, and if it's backwards, it will cause the opening to operate backwards. Switches should be wired in parallel for fail-secure openings, or openings with multiple access control points. When switches are wired in parallel, closing any one of the switches completes the circuit, providing power to the system. Switches wired in parallel will make fail-safe hardware act as though it's fail-secure. Switches should be wired in series for fail-safe openings. When switches are wired in series, they must all be closed to provide power back to the lock. Opening any one of the switches breaks the circuit, cutting power from the system. Switches wired in series will make fail-secure hardware act as though it's fail-safe. What if the system is working some of the time? Determine if the opening is located in an area with high vibration or impacts. Vibration or movement could be causing the wiring to come in and out of contact, connecting and disconnecting the circuit that powers the system. Also, ask if there is another electrical system wired within the security system. Another electrical system, which is on sometimes and off at other times, could cause intermittent function. For example, electromagnetic locks hooked into the system to provide nighttime security might cause hardware in another part of the building to malfunction only at night. If a system is failing primarily after dark, check for a connection to outdoor lighting that is timed to come on when the sun goes down. Finally, what if the system's sort of working? Consider these three possible scenarios. You can hear it working, but you still can't open the door. If it's a product such as an electric latch retraction exit device, improper mechanical adjustment or improper installation can keep a door from opening even if the electronic components are doing exactly what they should be. If you have more than one piece of equipment trying to work together to make a system operate, sequencing could be the problem. If two products are intended to work in a sequence but the proper sequence has not been set, you will usually hear the hardware trying to do its job. For example, say you have a system with an automatic operator and a lock. If the automatic operator is sequenced to try to open the door before the lock releases, the opening won't function properly even though each individual component is working. Don't forget, if the product was designed with LEDs for feedback, check what the LEDs are doing. This can save time, especially when investigating openings that are sort of functioning. The second scenario of a sort of operational opening is when it is working from one access control point, but not another. If the door works fine when triggered from one access control point, the locking hardware isn't the problem. 
The most likely source is the switch at the malfunctioning access control point. If it worked at one time but is not working now, it has either become disconnected or it has failed. The third scenario is when the opening isn't functioning the way the customer thought it would. Sometimes a door opening gets designed to operate in a way that differs from the customer's expectation. In this situation, try to determine the original statement of operation with the customer's description of what they thought the opening was supposed to do. Sometimes, the discrepancy is between the customer's expectation and the design of the system. Thanks for making the time to watch this video. For more information and resources on access control, doors, and door hardware, please visit our website.